one two one two one two. Welcome to the Christmas Eve Course in Miracles class. I would invite you to bring your energy into the room now and just take a deep breath. I know the ego is going to do everything it can sometimes to keep us from focusing in. But I'd like you to focus on your breath right now. We're going to talk about Christmas from a Course in Miracles perspective today. And the name of the section in the Course in Miracles is called Christmas as the End of Sacrifice. I like that. Christmas as the End of Sacrifice. Welcome to Facebook Live. This is Earl Purdy. And I need this right now. Anybody else need to focus in and hear another way to look at this time of the year? I appreciate you coming today. I know this is a special, a very special day. And with, on special days, most of us are somewhere else. So the fact that you're even here at all, and the people that are online are here at all, is a blessing. And so let's chase off the separated self. Let's chase off the ego mind. And let's think of something or someone or some situation that we're grateful for right now. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the truth. I'm grateful for the course. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for my, the health of my body. I'm grateful for the friends and the family and the loved ones. I'm grateful for the people who don't like me. I'm grateful for the people who I sometimes think are not acting out my script because those people who don't act out my script, they are really cool. And the reason why the people who don't act out my script are so cool is because they force me to look within. They force me to choose to have happiness that's not dependent on anybody else's behavior. And true happiness has nothing to do with anybody else's behavior. It's what the Course in Miracles keeps, keeps teaching us. So I'm grateful for the people who don't act the way I want them to. And you're a blessing for those people in your life that you don't act the way they want you to necessarily. Because, because I'm telling God, I'm telling Spirit, Holy Spirit today that I would follow you. I'm going to tell love, I'm going to tell spirit, I'm going to tell the Christ within me that I will follow it now. And I'm certain that the direction of God, I'm certain that the direction of spirit will give me peace. Certain that your direction gives me peace. Because this holy instant will be given to the Holy Spirit. Be So whatever's on your mind, whatever the issues are in your life right now, that you want to see different, mighty companions, this is an opportunity for us to give it up. It's time to give it up. It's time to give it up. So we're going to do Christmas as the end of sacrifice. If you got the Course in Miracles book, it's on page 327. I got some extra copies up front. One of the reasons why I, I, I bring the books out is because whether you realize it or not, sometimes following along in the book will help you stay conscious. It's real easy with the Course in Miracles for the mind to just go off somewhere else. So I want to thank those of you who are joining me on Facebook Live. I want to thank those of you who are in the room right now. Those of you in the room, would you look at me? Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you're here. I'm happy that you're here. You know, it means a lot that these parts of myself showed up. And then you're getting ready to have some fun, I guess, the rest of the day. You sound you sound like you're, you know, okay, all right. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm totally delirious or something. Okay, all right. That's okay. That's cool. And I'm going to go online here. We're going to do Christmas as the end of sacrifice. And I'm going to do, um, I want you to to recognize that the Course in Miracles is only talking about our, our love of fear. So even though it's using Christian terminology, it's only talking about love of fear. And I'm going to do it differently today. I'm going to try to break it down to love or fear. 
And um, because this section is a really deep section of the course. And what I'm doing now is going to, even though I'm not asking the, 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 the Facebook Live to put all these funny faces on top of me, <laughs> for some reason it's doing it. I don't know why it is, since I didn't request it. But it's putting all kinds of beards on me and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Santa Claus. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That's, 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 that's I don't know what it's called, but I, I don't I don't I don't particularly like it, and I didn't request it, so I don't know why it's doing it. Uh, uh, Snapchat. Yeah. It's, it's what is it? Snapchat. Yeah. Well, it's really weird since you didn't. It doesn't, since you didn't actually ask for it, it's kind of funny that it's doing it. But I'm not surprised either. Yeah. Those of you watching online, give me a minute here to see if I can find out what's causing that. Okay. Did you get a chance to see every little strand of hair on my face? <laughs> I feel like... Uh, we're having this is video video only modes. So you've got CJ saying the filter is hilarious. Well, oh, good. I'm glad it's hilarious, but it's but it's distracting to me. Claus, okay, so. I think I got it out of the way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see what let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, I love how. Uh, there's there's an endless array of interesting things that come up for us to <laughs> to to do online. It's like I bet you they have people hired to come up with irritating things yeah. <laughs> for you to do. Okay, we're talking about Christmas as the end of sacrifice. Thank you, Jessica, Kim, CJ, Linda, Sonia, Myrna, Bonnie, all you good brothers and sisters that's online. So it starts out in Christmas at the end of sacrifice. It starts out by saying, and I'm going to do it in a conversational manner. It says, don't be afraid to recognize that the idea of sacrifice is an idea that you've made up. So it, the Course of Miracles is saying to us, I'll say it again. The idea of you having to sacrifice is an idea that you've made up. There are a lot of people that are sacrificing right now. They're doing last minute sacrificing. They, they, they really maybe are spending more money than they think they have and they're stressing out because they think they have to get a gift for someone in order to feel like they're doing what they're supposed to do at Christmas. And there are some brothers and sisters that are out there that are doing it from a perspective of total joy and happiness because they're sharing. There are two kinds of givers that's happening out there right now. And the ones who feel like they're stressed out, the Course in Miracles is saying to us, well, they need to understand that this whole idea that they may have to sacrifice, that's something that they're deciding mm -hmm. that they have to do. Okay, And it says, don't seek to be safe by attempting to protect yourself from where your safety isn't. Um, your brothers and your father have become very fearful to you. So sometimes love is fearful to people. And the Course in Miracles says that we bargain with people, sometimes out of our fear. We bargain with people for a few special relationships. And we bargain for those special relationships that we think we see. He says some scrap of safety. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it. So there are people who are trying to make sure they remain special to someone today. And who could possibly lose their specialness if they don't come up with something. Right? And the course it says there are relationships where we bargain with people for a few special relationships in which we think we see some scraps of, of safety. And it says don't try to keep apart your thoughts and the thought that's been given you. So let's not separate the thoughts that we think from the thoughts that the truth has given us. Because it says when we bring the thoughts that we have together with the thoughts that God is giving us, and when we perceive the thoughts that we have and the thoughts that truth is giving us, then the choice between thinking based on fear the way the world gets us to think and thinking based on truth is just nothing more than like a gentle awakening. It's as easy as opening your eyes to daylight when you have no more need of sleep. In other words, what is it saying? It's saying when I really listen to what the Course is telling me the way love operates, and then I look at it the way I've been taught to operate, Really, if I see it clearly, I'm going to choose for the way love operates. Mm -hmm. And love is operating by saying, I love you whether or not you make a sacrifice to me or not. I love you whether or not you give me a Christmas gift. I love you anyway. 
that's the way love works because it's something I'm giving you. It's not based on a bargain. It's not based on anything that you got to give me for me to give it to you. Then the other kind of love, the special love, is based on you better give me something if you really want my love. All right. So if you see both of those clearly, the Course in Miracles says, which one are you going to choose for? The one, let's, let's do a game show. Which one do you want to choose? Do you want to choose for the one that's not based on sacrifice or the one that is? Which one? None. The one that's based on no sacrifice. Okay. So those of you online, on Facebook, you want to give yourself that little test and see whether or not you'd rather go with the, with the love path or the guilt path. I think I'm going to do the the love path. My ego wants to say, I think I want to do the guilt. <laughs> I almost said it. I'm like, I'm going to go down. You know, my ego wants me to go the guilt path. Uh, then the Course of Miracles says that when you think about Christmas, he says, think about Christmas as a star. Think about the Christmas as representing light in the darkness or truth in the darkness or love in the darkness. So what we're going to do is we're going to think of Christmas today as love in the world of fear. And he says, don't see the love as outside yourself. See the love as shining from inside yourself. And then if you would accept that love is inside yourself, that's when you can say the time of Christ has come. There are a lot of people that are looking at Christ as somebody that's going to come externally. The Course in Miracles says, when you are aware of the love and the truth inside yourself, I want you to look at that as the time that Christ has come. And he says, the Christ in you, the true you, the true love, what's the characteristic of true love? Well, the Course in Miracles says true love comes demanding nothing. Okay, so if I'm truly loving you, I'm not making demands on you. Love doesn't make demands on you. Then the next line says uh, no sacrifice of any kind is asked by love. So if I love you, I'm not going to ask you to sacrifice for me. I'm not going to ask you to give me something you don't want to give me. In other words, I don't want you giving to me out of shoulda, gotta, oughta. So I want that to let go, be let go of. Uh, you know what? I'm really becoming that way. The truth is, and you know what? The more I become that way, the less people I have around me. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. And that's the truth. The more I become that way, because people love it when you won't sacrifice. When you do sacrifice, if they think sacrifice is love, and when you don't sacrifice, sometimes they're not interested in you. Or if you don't sacrifice, they think you don't love them. So actually, sometimes a person that says, "I want to give to you out of my heart, and I, and I don't want to sacrifice," is looked at as a person that's not very loving. So you go through a transition where the people who think love <laughs> is sacrifice fade out of your life. And then you'll be in this in-between state before you see the people who understand that love is not sacrifice. And it's that in-between stage that most people lose their faith and then go back to the old way. Because it looks like they don't have as many people when they're in transition. I'm personally in a big transition, so I'm watching a change happen in my social life. I'm watching a change happen in the people that are around me. Uh, and every time you go through a transition and a disorientation as a result of that transition, you're also going to see a change in the people in your experience. So uh, is anybody experiencing that? Yes. Okay. All right. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Because, you see, if I'm no longer going to try to change the people in my life and they choose to be another way, then I have no choice but to allow other people in my life that's already expressing themselves in a way that's compatible with the way I am now. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm no longer going to ask people to sacrifice, and that would be asking my friends to sacrifice, if I was to say, I've changed in a certain way, so you've got to change that way too. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's me asking them to sacrifice because maybe they like the way they are or the way that they are now serves them. Where the old Earl would have tried to change my friends. Or try, especially the ones who were the most special. Those were the ones I would always be the most merciless with. The ones I said I loved the most. Right? Because those were the ones I had the greatest script for. So now I'm a new Earl. And new Earl is not expecting and asking anyone around him to change just because he's changed. But new Earl also wants to be uh, joined and connected and have some cool people that he enjoys being around. Also, so he's got to open himself up to the universe Love bringing new people into his life that's already, notice I'm saying, already compatible to where I am now. They show up, you know, I used to love green, now I love blue, right? So blue people have to be sent. And I don't have to change blue people because they're already blue and I like blue. So I have to be willing to let go 
of the old in order to have the new. And some of the people that I was in relationship with before, guess what? They are turning blue too. So there will be some people that will go with you to the next level that you are going to. And there are some people who will need other people to fill the role you used to play. And then there will be some people that you know you just have to choose out of relationship with. But it's not done out of grievance or negativity. So, uh, any takeaways from what I've said so far? Yes. Really quickly, in my career, um, I had taken some coaching classes mm -hmm. years ago. There was a specific guy that said, what other, what other job do you, like, give presents for? Like, do you give a present when you go to the dentist? Do you give a present when you, you know, when you hire your attorney? Mm -hmm. And so in my career, we're kind of anticipated to be giving nice gifts and stuff. And I'm like, so this Christmas, I did very small for very few, and I feel so much better because I always felt this obligation mm -hmm. to be giving like so what if they don't refer me or they like I don't I love them anymore I still send them note cards and stuff but I'm not buying gifts for everybody and and this what just what we were just told yeah. in and when you did buy gifts for everybody that you could that was you making yourself do that yeah and because, I, you know most of the time it was out of joy yes but the but some other time it was like god they live really far away Can yes you, take this you know it was a little bit of a sacrifice and then why am i doing this yes Good. I'm, I'm, that's what starts to happen when you start to wake up spiritually. You start to question things that you have done in the past, especially if it's not inspirational. Yeah. So, you had your hand up? Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing um, that I've noticed is you can never change other people. You can only change yourself. And when <coughs> you realize that, you grow as a person yourself. Also, the ego, I mean the ego, mm -hmm. I yeah. is the opposite of love. Yes. The two cannot coexist. Yeah. So when you were talking about that special love, the guilt path, to me, um, you're either in a path of love or you're in a path of ego. I agree with you totally. You, you look kind of blue. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just found a blue person. <laughs> and I just heard another blue person. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that you'll never be alone in anything that you're in to if you're really into it. Now, if you're not really into it, it'll look like your, your social environment is never changing or the people around you, which is your feedback to let you know that there's little, there needs to be a little bit more sincerity about the change. doesn't mean that you're bad. Um, okay, so on, online, uh, Jason says authenticity is the way forward. There's another Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, and so CJ says, I so appreciated my sacrifice-free relationships. That's the kind mm -hmm. of relationship that we want to have. It's a sacrifice-free yeah. A relationship. So, so just like people go to a restaurant and they ask for a gluten-free meal, I ask for a sacrifice-free relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so that we should ask for that. I want a sacrifice-free relationship. Uh, it also says, that, and notice that I'm using the word Christ. He said, Christ is the love within you, and it's come. So it says, love comes demanding nothing, no sacrifice of any kind or, or of anyone is asked by love. In love's presence, the whole idea of sacrifice loses all meaning because love is the host to God. You need but invite the love in who is there already by recognizing that the host of love is one and no thought alien to love's oneness can abide with love there. In other words, when you're reading the course and you go, okay, what does that mean? Keep going and go, in other words, love must give, love must be total to give your loving true self welcome because the presence of love creates the love or holiness that surrounds love. I love that. The presence of love creates the love that surrounds it. So if I become the presence of love, which is the presence of holiness, it will create the love, it will create the holiness that surrounds it. So don't let the wording and the form of the words and the Course in Miracles Fool you. It's just talking about just what we said earlier, love or fear. So holiness, would that be love or fear? Love. love. It would obviously be love. So when you see those words and you feel your resistance come up, just change it to love. That's all you have to do. And it, it becomes a lot easier to understand. It says love must be total to give love the true self welcome. But the presence of holiness, the presence of love creates the love that surrounds it. And sometimes the man asks, but then why didn't it just say love and not say holiness? Okay, that's because I believe the purpose of the Course in Miracles is to give us new perceptions of religious terminology that we're using to block us. That the whole purpose of the Course is to give us new interpretations of a lot of the stuff we learn. Because there's a vast number of people 
in this country especially who have Christian backgrounds. That's not at all unusual. And so a lot of us are battling those programmings that we got as children. And so what the course is saying is rather than spend the rest of your life battling those terms or having resistance toward those terms, wouldn't it just be easy to give it another meaning? That way when you hear it, it can free you instead of you getting upset because you're hearing the word. But I'm sorry, just because you don't like certain words doesn't mean you're not going to hear them in society. Okay, if you have a resistance to the word Christ, uh, you can get upset about it all you want, but if you in America, you're going to hear that word. <laughs> so it would be a lot easier for you to have an interpretation of that word that every time you heard it, it would free you and give you peace instead of conflict. And another word for Christ is love. It's our true loving self. I like that. So the Course in Miracles says, love must be total to give the loving self welcome, for the presence of innocence, the presence of love, creates the love that surrounds it. No fear can touch the host who cradles God in the time of Christ, for the host is as holy as the perfect innocence that the host protects and whose power protects him. So that is saying to us, and let me give you a little tip after reading the book from cover to cover to cover over a hundred times. Uh, There's nothing that will protect you more in the world than the belief that you're innocent. There's nothing that will create more pain and suffering for you in the world than thinking you're sinful and guilty. If you believe that you're a sinner, you're going to suffer. If you believe you are a sinner, you're going to suffer. If you believe in, if you believe in sin, you're going to suffer. Because those terms evoke in the mind that somehow or another you are not okay and you might need to be punished according to the way it's traditionally taught. No, I have met many people, I, when I grew up in fundamentalist Baptist religion, then you, and unless you said you were a sinner, you were going to suffer. It was just the opposite. Is If I said I was a sinner, then that was a good thing. So if I told myself I was inherently flawed and I was born that way, somehow or another that was a good thing. Because that's what I'm saying. I'm inherently flawed and somehow or another, that's a good thing. Uh, the Course in Miracles is saying that when you have those kinds of thoughts, which we could substitute the word guilt, um, because guilt is equal to that, then guilt, he says, is the request for suffering. So every time a person says, I feel guilty, they're requesting to the universe that I should be punished and I should suffer. And then they have things happen to them that doesn't exactly make them happy and they wonder where it comes from. Because they don't know and we're not taught that thought is creative and our consciousness and our mind and what we focus on is what creates our perception of reality. So if I think I'm guilty, then I'm going to create situations and circumstances in my perception that validate the idea that I'm guilty. So there's no payoff in believing you're guilty. There is a payoff in believing that sometimes you have errors and you make errors and errors are for correction and loving correction. An error is not as attractive as a sin or guilt. Uh, people don't like to make mistakes. Now, as I tell you you're innocent, I watch that the, the staying conscious becomes harder. <laughs> I've noticed that if I say certain things in a class, I can count on what appears to be people being tempted to go unconscious. And nothing seems to trigger that more than saying, you're innocent. You're not guilty. That'll do it every time. So the truth is, and I'll say this, if you, if here's my Christmas gift to everybody online and in the room. The most important idea from the course one of, that you can have is that you are innocent. You are sinless and you are guiltless. It says that in the book. That's the core idea that we need to. So what is the purpose of a relationship? The purpose of a relationship, and if you need to take a nap, take a nap. Don't force yourself, okay? And, and really, really, no, it's, a, it's a strain. It, it's good to be somewhere you can feel peaceful and go to sleep. That's all right. I wish I could. You know, I, I'd like to be able to take a nap and feel like some, I, nobody's going to hit me over the head with a club. So it's okay to do that. Um, so remember that, okay, so if you're going to have a special relationship, if you're going to have a relationship with someone, a holy relationship is merely a relationship where the two people in the relationship are dedicated and committed to never let each other forget that they're innocent. That's it. Everybody gives them, oh, it's, it's got to be more complicated than that. No, it's not more complicated than that. A holy relationship is a relationship that you're committed to your peace and the other person's peace and that you're not going to harm them and you're not going to attack them. Now, you can do it in a monogamous relationship, you can do it in a polyamorous relationship, you can do it in an open relationship, you can do it in any kind of relationship in any form you want to do it in. But what the purpose is, is that you're going to see each other as innocent. 
So that's what a holy relationship is. It's a loving relationship. It's a relationship that I'm not asking the other person to make a sacrifice for me. I'm not asking you, and, and, it's, and, I, and that means I have an innocent relationship with anything I have a relationship with. So that can be me having an innocent relationship with what I perceive to be my financial situation, as well as a person, as well as a circumstance. So a relationship is not necessarily a romantic relationship. A relationship is a relationship with anything in your life. There are a lot of people that have a guilt around their finances. There are a lot of people that have guilt around their bodies. There are people who have guilt about different things that they're in relationship with. A holy relationship with everything in your life is a relationship that you feel innocent in your relationship with everything in your life. And that's what I'm working on. And that's my new kind of relationship that I'm looking for to create within myself so that I can draw people into my life that also want that same purpose and that same goal. The Course in Miracles says the ego is the part of us that believes in complexity. So it needs me to make it more complex than this. So the ego part of the mind can't handle me saying a holy relationship is a relationship where you are committed to seeing each other's innocence. See, that's too easy. An uh, unholy relationship is a relationship where you're focusing on seeing each other's guilty or separate. One is I'm, you're one with me. The other one is that you're different and separate from me. Okay, so that's simple. <laughs> that's simple. Uh, it's not easy necessarily because I want people to give me freedom and see me as innocent and let me be. Mm, but sometimes I'm not so good about doing that toward other people. <laughs> So that's the challenge with these kind of things is that every, I've never met anybody in my life who did not want me to be kind and loving and peaceful toward them and not make them feel guilty. Not really, in a, not ever. But being, being able to do that toward me, that was a different ball game. Or me being able to do it toward them, that's a different ball game. Because with people who are special, I do have scripts and demands and expectations and behaviors that I want them to do in order to please me. So receiving it is a lot easier than it seems than giving it, don't you think? And that's why I think people don't jump up and down when they hear that. Yeah, I want my freedom, but I don't want you to have yours. I want to have some kind of control over what you do, right? Because I don't trust you. That's why I think I need to control you. It's because I don't trust you. If I trust you, I have no need to control you. So people try to control who don't have trust. So people who don't trust are control freaks usually. It's really simple. It's not really that complicated. So um, any takeaways or any thoughts or questions about that? So going back to what you were saying, basically you love the person, not the sin. You love who the person is and not what the thing is that they seem right. to be doing. Exactly. Okay. Um, then after that, um, the other thing that I was getting, I'm reading my notes and I have all these questions. Let's see. Um, the ego goes back to fear. You got love on one side and fear on the other. Right. The ego deals with the fear, with the control. Anything that's not love is dealing with our ego. That's right. So what we basically have to do is learn to keep our ego in check. Yes. And let love control us. That's right. Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Robin McGuire. Robin. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Sure. You're getting bluer every second. <laughs> Turn it into more of a blue person. And yeah. the same way. And, and I love blue. The Course of Miracles book is blue. Anybody else have any takeaways, comments, questions? So I just find it fascinating how, like, uh, like in the world it's flipped. Because in the world... Um, it's good to see you, Chris. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. And in the world it's flipped because in the world, like, love, you're after sacrifice. But then... But then anything that's not love, it's, it's okay. So, it, okay, it's, it's weird because, like, like, what is love in the world is, like, is like what causes you pain. But then what is perceived as real love, you're after sacrifice, so you won't go there. Yeah. You'd rather stick with something that's painful and, that, and that's like a scrap because you're like, well, that's real love because it's not after you sacrifice. Or that's like, or like real love into the world, you have that sacrifice, and you don't want to go there. That's right. That's right. So it, 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 everything, the Course in Miracles says everything in the world is the opposite of what's true. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, that the world is the opposite of what's true, what's really spiritually true. Yeah. So and that's, a, that's always one of the ways that I get it. I go, okay, th does the world believe this? Mm -hmm. The fear-based world believe this. Then I know the truth has to be totally opposite. All we have to know, if we looked at the condition of many of the things that happening in the world today, 
it would have to bring us to the conclusion that we're not practicing the truth. Because the, the result, you know, we wouldn't see so much separation and fear. But in order to be healed, things have to come up and be seen and then seen correctly, right? So our, the part of us that is the Christ or the love self, the instance, what I've noticed in terms of the political situation is that whether you love Trump or don't love Trump, you still would have to admit that there are a lot of things that have come up to be looked at as a result. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so that's the good part. Mm -hmm. The good part is that I'm watching people look at things and admit to things and want things to be a different way in ways that I've never seen before. I'm also seeing the getting an opportunity to see the difference between what happens when people feel very separate from each other and then what happens when people feel unified with each other because I'm seeing so much separation. So it is my own mind, it is my own consciousness that I'm looking at. And if I forget that I'm looking at my own consciousness, then I have also fallen for the illusion like everybody else. If I walk around saying it's outside of my mind, like everybody else is saying the problem is outside, then I'm not any, conscious, any more conscious than the person that's never picked up the Course in Miracles or a true book. If, if, if I'm still seeing myself as separate from what I'm looking at, it's not being linked to my own mind, I'm just as unconscious as a person that never picked up a spiritual book. So I don't become more spiritual by acting like I'm indignant about the things that are happening out there because I'm such a great person and I'm in this world that everybody is so cruel and unconscious. And no, thank you for helping me get in touch with what it is within my own consciousness that needs to be reperceived and what's happening in my own mind that needs to be healed is a conscious perception of what's happening in the world. You know, so you are no more conscious than how connected you feel to what you are experiencing. Okay? Yes. Um, this is going to be really heavy. Um, can you explain? I mean, I see so much greed in the world. Okay. And so, would you explain how gre greed relates to fear, which is the opposite of love? Right. So, how do we, when you recognize it and you see it and you know it's the opposite of love and you see people that are acting out of greed, mm -hmm. which is acting out of ego mm -hmm. versus love, mm -hmm. How do you help them recognize that they're acting out of greed and uh, greed and greed is not going to get them to where they want to go? Well, the thing that, the thing to keep the thing to realize number one is that the same Holy Spirit that's in you is the same God as it's in them. So, so God didn't make a voice for us alone. So they're also on their spiritual path, and part of their spiritual path is for them to appear to be greedy until their own spiritual self begins to wake them up to what needs to be changed within themselves. So we can't, you even, know. even trying to talk to them about greed is not going to help them. I guess it's when the student's ready, the teacher will come. The, and the teacher is within. And the other thing, you do, and what you do, the other thing you do is recognize, where you ask yourself, where within myself am I also experiencing and feeling and thinking greed? Because I'm seeing it, so I couldn't see it unless it was also in my own mind or I wouldn't even recognize it. So, so the first thing i got to ask myself is, Holy Spirit, uh, where am I experiencing or expressing greed in my life that I might not know about it? Right? Because I see it there, and that's how I know it's also in my mind. And then as far as these people, the, the thing is, if I, let me demonstrate love. Let me be the presence of love so that they'll see a stark contrast between the way that they're being and the way that they could be. One of the first things that happen, I think, as you get deeper on your spiritual path is you let go of any of the ideas of somehow or another you're going to change anyone outside of you. And what you realize is that if the outer is a reflection of an, the inner, all I have to do really is allow my own mind to be shifted. Because, you know, and, and, and the people go, what do you mean? You're not going to be an activist? You're not going to go out here and march? If the Holy Spirit within me, if the voice within me, if my inner guidance told me to go march, I'd go march. So there's, there ne there's never a cut and dry answer in terms of behavior. Every moment you got to ask, what would you have me do, Holy Spirit? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? Who would you have me say it to? And so the Holy Spirit may say to you, sit your butt at home, meditate. And the Holy Spirit might say, go pick up a sign and go out and march around the building. See, you know, one of the ways, when you become conscious, you let go of the idea that you know what you're going to do in form in every situation and circumstance. You don't. You, you, you are, your guidance comes to you on a need-to-know basis. Yeah. So you'll get to the point that you're not even trying to plan anything more than a week out. Mm -hmm. 
and you'll be kind of stretching it then. Because you'll realize everything you need to know to handle what's going to happen tomorrow, you will be told tomorrow what that is. The more afraid you are, the less faith you have, the more planning you do. And that's okay, because if that planning makes you feel less fear, then the less fear you have, the more likely you are to hear your guidance. So basically the Holy Spirit comes to us when we need to know it. That's right. Okay. And there's actually a prayer in the Course that says that. The Holy Spirit will let me know what I need to know when I need to know it. God's going to let me know what I need to know when I... See, all of that need to know part of me, that is my fear. That is my ego. I'm not trusting. And that's not bad. So thank you. Thank you. Um... Jason says, let me be the presence of love. Kim says, can we speak to them on a soul level? That's a good point. Yes, you can speak to people on a soul level. There have been changes in relationships in my life where I could not talk to that person personality to personality, ego to ego. There will be people you cannot physically talk to and you're going to change anything about them. But our real self, our true selves are connected. Our minds are joined. So I can let the Holy Spirit or the loving spirit in me communicate with the loving spirit in you and then the loving spirit in you make whatever changes that need to be made in your personality self if there's a need for a change to be made in your personality self. But the funny thing about it is that I've seen more changes in my relationships with people I thought I would never have a change with when I left them alone. When I stopped trying to manipulate them to be the way that I wanted them to be. Even if I thought I was doing it out of my spiritual nature, you know, that still was my ego. But when I gave them to the Holy Spirit as part of myself, when I gave them to God as part of myself, when I asked the God in me to communicate with the God in them, then I saw a change, but I still was not making my happiness dependent on them changing. Because if you make your happiness dependent on them changing, you're still in your ego mind. So you're always in your ego mind when you say, if something outside of me were different, I'd be happy. I'm sorry. That's always the fear-based mind that goes, if this other person changed, if, 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 if the government changed, if the world changed, I'd be happy. No, that's not true. You'll be happy when you decide to be happy. The Course says happiness is a decision you must make. Love is a decision you must make. You'll be happy the day you choose to be happy. You're not going to be happy because your mama changed, your daughter changed, your girlfriend changed, your sister changed. Uh, the, the, the political party changed. But, that, but, but does that mean you wouldn't, if you were led to vote for another party? No. You just keep in mind that your happiness is going to ultimately come from a decision that you make. It's going to come from you. <laughs> That, that sounds easier to me. I wonder why I used to think this was the hard way. And then the way that the world teaches is the easy way. I, I would watch myself and many students and people who come in my life since I've been doing this. They'll act like this is the drudgery. This is the thing that's so hard. And then they'll go out and do a job they hate for 60 hours. Or they'll stay in a relationship that the person hasn't told them I love you in 20 years. Or they'll, they'll allow themselves to not experience any of the abundance that the life wants to give them. And they'll keep doing that every single day. But then you say, take five minutes in the morning and tell yourself I'm not a victim of the world I see. And then they go totally unconscious. <laughs> or say that I don't have time. I love that. The, the, the Course in Miracles workbook lessons, at least the first 20 or 30, take two minutes a day. And I would hear people say, I didn't have time. <laughs> There's nobody on earth that busy. <laughs> There's nobody on the face of the earth so busy that they don't have two minutes that they could focus on something. But I would find myself not doing it when I first did it. Not only that, I wouldn't even remember what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be a simple lesson like I'm determined to see things differently. And I would actually not be able to remember that. Mm -hmm. And you gotta, Now, I'm a person who was in a black repertory theater company for years. I had script to learn like this. But then I got into the Course in Miracles and would go... I can't remember. What that? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, there's nothing to fear. I have to write it on my arm. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. Right? That's, that's how we know that there's another part of us called the ego that has enormous resistance to our change of mind. Because we know that's not anything hard to do. But you're not your ego. You're not your ego. You're not your ego. You're not your fear. You're not your ego. 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 You're not your personality. You're not your separate self. You're not the character in the play that's sitting in the room. That's not who you are. This is the character in the play. This is a three-dimensional play. This is a cosmic drama. You're playing a role, but don't confuse yourself with the role you're playing. That's what the Course is teaching us, that we are beyond the body. You're not your body. You're not your ego. You're not your personality. 
And it loves for you to analyze it. It loves you to analyze it because that gives it more reality. That gives it more power. That makes it more real. So that's why people love to think about their past. And they love to think about the dramas of their everyday experience. And they love to worry about what's going to happen because that perpetuates your ego separate identity. So it loves to analyze it. Oh, because that means it must be really important since I'm spending so much time analyzing my weary and my upset and who I don't like and what somebody said and how they're doing. So this, so we're being told, this is Christmas. Say, I'm going to let go of the idea of me sacrificing and losing and giving up my happiness and allowing myself to be manipulated and controlled by forces outside of myself when I'm the one that decides what I feel. Let Christmas represents the time that you're going to go, the real me is love and anything that's not love is not me. That's a program. That's a condition. Two people clashing in a relationship is just two conditions clashing with each other. Two programs clashing with each other. That's all it is when two people clash. My program is clashing with your program. My fantasy is clashing with your fantasy. Our real selves could never even fight. Our real selves would never be even upset with each other. Our real selves know it's just one self. So all of the big drama that we're dealing with every day is never us doing it anyway. It's, that's what's such a trip about it, you know. Okay, I'm going to go to the next paragraph. Yes. Uh, so what you're saying, basically, is we need to set our intent every day. That's right. Every day we need to set our intention. And the other thing is, when you're talking about the cosmic world, the play of the world, basically, if, if I'm digesting what you're saying correctly, mm -hmm. is, um, God's in control of the whole world. We're the characters in his play. We're the char we, we are making up the characters. We, are, we have the same ability as our creator. So therefore, we have also, we can come up with our ideas, our fantasies, whatever it is we think we want to create. The difference is the things that we extend that come from our true self, our God self, uh, these things never end. They're permanent and they only increase joy. When we come up with stuff that's opposite to that, it's a fa there's a fail-safe system, and this is it. Want we'll to know what it is? The fail-safe system is anything that's not based on love will never last, it will never be permanent, and it will always be temporary, and it will always end. So anything that's bringing any lack of peace and love and joy, by definition, cannot last. Oh, so Trump will be gone soon. Anything that causes any kind of pain will not last. But you, the truth is... Not only would Trump be gone, all of us will too, as separate beings. That's how you know it's ultimately not real, because even your physical identity ends at some point in time. That's what a friend of mine says. He sees everybody as a spirit versus as a person. And that's the way we're supposed to be looking at each other. We're supposed to be looking at each other as divine beings. The Course says, I am spirit. You're not really truly waking up until you begin to break body identification. When you stop identifying yourself as a woman or a man, or a separate body, or a separate being. It's a difference between being a spiritual being, knowing that I'm expressing it through, through this body that's called Earl Purdy, and thinking that I'm Earl Purdy trying to be spiritual. So what you have, it's a big difference between being with a woman who thinks she's a woman and trying to be spiritual, and being with a man who thinks he's a man and trying to be spiritual. You, you, it, it ain't going to work than being a spiritual being remembering that's what you are as a man or as a woman. Because if you think you're a woman or a man, then you're still going to be limited by those limited conceptions we've been taught by the world about what a man and woman is. That's the truth. So you're not truly going to be free, Earl, until you recognize that you are spirit and not a body. That's when freedom is in the mind. This freedom comes from me knowing who I really am. The Course in Miracles says every problem is an identity problem. Every problem you got, you got that problem in your mind because you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten who you really and truly are. So why have you forgotten who you really truly are? Because there's a you you've made up that you are identifying with that's not really you. Whether that, whether that, whether it is what you were told as a child or what you've gone through, that's why you, that's why you'll never be free until you recognize your past is over, and that your past is. Stop referencing your story. Stop refer. Go into the new year and go. I'm not going to tell my story about my childhood one more time. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to say one more time what I went through with my parents, what I went through as a child, what I went through last week, what I went through as a teenager. Make that New Year's resolution that you're going to say, uh, like the course said, the past is over. It can touch me not. Mm 
That's one of the workbook lessons. The past is over. It can't touch me. Your past can't touch you. It's gone. You cannot not let go what's already gone. It's already gone. I don't see it until you tell me about it. I do not see your childhood. You have to tell me about it. And you know why you tell me about it? To perpetuate your ego false identity. That's why, to keep that structure going over and over and over again. So you want to wake up fast? Stop your story. Or make up another one. This is not real any more than the other one. You could go, I had the best parents in the world, and I lived in the best neighborhood, and I had the best brothers and sisters, and I was surrounded by love, and everybody loved me, and I had a very well-balanced childhood. If the mind doesn't know the difference between the real and the vividly imagined, you still would start to feel better about yourself. Unless you have such an investment in your past that now you're getting ready to try to justify why you need to hang on to it. Yes, brother. Yeah, you know, when you were talking about that and, and reworking how you you know say things, I used to say like all the time like, well, I never had a father; he was always off working and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And that's how I would tell people. And, and then one day I was in this group and I told them that we had a new member, and I said, well, I had this most amazing father. He totally sacrificed knowing his kids so he could go out and make money so that we could have everything we would want. And he gave up, you know, knowing us personally so he could deliver to us, you know, mm -hmm. his way of loving mm -hmm. us was to give us material things. Mm -hmm. There was a sadness in that, but he was an amazing man. And all these people looked at me and said, you used to bitch about your father all the time. And when I looked at him from that point of view, and it was the same experiences, it was just reframing them. And did you, did, did you feel better? Oh, 100%. Thank you. You know, I mean, thank I've, you. I've always now thank appreciated you. him instead of being angry with him for not giving me what I thought he should. And all yeah. anger is it, all anger is nothing but somebody or something isn't doing what you want them to do. That I, I, I wish I could, again, I wish I could make it more complicated than that. You tell me what you're mad about, and I'll tell you what you're saying you wish somebody needs to do the way you want you, them to do it in order for you to be okay. Well, when I, when I you know, realized what, that's what, it. But it wasn't what he needed to do to make it okay. It was how I needed to see it. And you get, because the truth is your father was a total mystery to you, and you don't really know what your father was thinking or what your father was doing or what was right, going right. on. Our, our memory of our childhood is so warped and distorted that 90% of the things we think happened to us in our childhood did not even happen to us the way we think it happened to us. You, 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 that's the funny thing about when people tell me about their childhood, even when I go back to mine. I talk to my older brothers and sisters, and I can tell them things that I thought happened in my childhood, and they, they'll freak me out with another perception of it that was completely different from anything that I thought was going on. So, so The Course in Miracles has a great line that will help you release your childhood or the past, which is this. You ready? Yeah. Everything was for my own best interest. That's all you have to tell yourself. I didn't say it was pleasant. I didn't say I always experienced everything is pleasant. I said everything that happened to me in my childhood, in my past, was for my own best interest. Why? Because it, it was part of the evolution of my soul that brought me to the point that I'm sitting in front of you saying, I want to love you, and I want you to be free, and I want to see you as, and I want to see you as innocent. So brought us to where we are now. That's my point. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the most exciting things about A Course in Miracles, that I get to see you you get to choose your perception. That's one of the most exciting things about it. That's the miracle. And I'm entitled to miracles. And I'm entitled to miracles is the same as saying, I am entitled to correct perceptions. Because the Course of Miracles says a, 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 that a miracle is a true perception. It's just a correct perception. That if we have a correct perception, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. right. That's what the Course of Miracles is saying. If you guys really see things with love and peace, that's a freaking miracle. Now, that's a miracle. That's why it's called the Course of Miracles. So if you change your mind from wanting to be right to wanting to be happy, that's a miracle. Yes, that's so exactly that's, right. So basically, a miracle is a mistake that's corrected. That's right. A, a miracle is nothing but a mistake that I'm now seeing correctly. You know, uh, and, and just think, the one thing you do have absolute power of, is the power of choice and decision. You totally have the power to decide how you're going to see anything that's going on in your life. And another thing, too, 
uh, you're going to be overruled by God. You're not going to get everything you want the way you want it. You need to let that one go too. The Course of Miracles is saying, you don't perceive your own best interest. I'm sorry. God would be most unloving if God gave you probably 90% of the things you're asking for. Yeah. yeah. And so if you walk, so if you think being on a higher level of consciousness or being a spiritual student or a metaphysical giant means that all you have to do is think of everything you want and it's going to manifest, then you're still just as asleep as you can possibly be. No wise being could possibly believe that they always know what's best for them in every situation and circumstance to have. And so I've seen that a lot of times the ego gets people who get on the metaphysical spiritual path. And do you know how it gets them? They go from, I have no power, I'm a total victim, and it seems like everything is happening to me. They get into all these books about manifesting, which can appear to work. And then it becomes they think God isn't real unless they get every little thing they imagine and think they want. So they go from all the way from being a victim to now God is really real if I, if I pick that person out and I get that person. Or I pick that job out and I want that job. Or I pick that body out that I think I want to have. And that's just as unconscious as when you thought you were a victim. Because if you're conscious, you realize that you don't have a perception that is large enough and aware enough of all the ramifications of every decision you make to actually know what's best for you to have in every situation. So you let go of your fantasies and you might say, this is my preference. Or you would do, maybe you would do what I do, which is, that will be done, that will be done, that will be done. Somebody asked me to pray for them, I always go, I want God's will for you in this situation. Give it up to God. Yeah, that's the only thing that feels honest to me. The other statement that feels the most honest is, I don't know. If you, if you want to make sure what you're saying is always in alignment with the truth, say, I don't know. <laughs> That's the most honest statement you can make as a human being. I don't know. I, I do not have absolute 100% total certainty about this. That's what no. The Court says to know means to be absolutely, totally certain. 100% certain. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, begin to wind this down right now. I'm going to do, starting the first Thursday in January at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I'm going to start uh, doing a Facebook Live that's called Hardcore Course in Miracles. Hardcore Course in Miracles. So you tune in to see what that means. Okay? And it's hardcore. And there are many people that have been studying. I've been studying the Course in Miracles for, you know, 30 years. There's a lot of people that have been studying the Course in Miracles a long time. And they, want, and they, are, they are ready to hear it. And there are people who've been studying it six months could be ready to hear it at a deeper level. They're not at the level where they feel like arguing about it. They want to get it more, realize it more, hear it more, understand it more, practice it more. They're not at that stage, which is a normal stage, where all you're doing is debating the ideas, analyzing the ideas, arguing with the ideas. This class will drive a person like that absolutely crazy. Okay, because this is going to be me taking 30 years of obsession and bringing it to a an hour to an hour and a half class. So I don't even know all the things that are going to come through me. But they're going to, but it's the things that are going to come through me is what I want to come through me and what I'm allowing. So that will be uh, on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. I'm completing the course of love, and then I'm going to start doing hardcore course. Hardcore. 7 p.m. Mountain Time on Thursday, starting the first Thursday in January. Okay? And uh, I'm very, very excited about it. Because I finally feel like I'm going to also be able to share the course at the level that I really want to share it at also in a way that I've never shared it before. So it's not going to be geared toward beginners. It's just going to be geared toward this is what's coming through right now 100% from this book. And I'm going to do everything in my power to allow it to come through in such a way that it will take a lot of the complexity and mystery out of what's being said. And I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it. So, um, we were talking about stories. Uh, you were talking about stories right now. And so one of the things that I tell myself, yeah, I believe in reincarnation. So one of the things that I was telling myself is that like, I need to get everything in this lifetime. Because if I come back in the next lifetime, you know, I'm going to have to go through 37 years of pain like I did this lifetime mm -hmm. until I start getting it. Mm -hmm. But then, that's just a story that I'm telling myself. Uh, it's not necessarily true. You know it's not necessarily true because you say it in the future. See, everything that's real, you can do it now. Everything that's real, you, Chris, you could change your interpretation of your life right now. 
you, you don't have to go. Nobody in this room has to go five more minutes looking at things the way that they look at it. No one listening or watching this has to go five more minutes looking at anything the way that they already look at it. And at any point in time, you can practice the holy instant, which is the instant of being in the present. It's, it's a, there's literally a line in the Course that says, you know, the holy instant is now. It's now. The healing instant is now. Now, why wouldn't I do that? Because the Course in Miracles says there's something payoff that you're getting from staying the way you are. That's all. That's not complicated either. You're not changing your mind because there's some payoff to you from staying exactly the way you are right now in the way you're thinking. And anytime you want to, Earl, you can change your mind and you can look at things another way and experience the Christmas, Merry Christmas as the end of sacrifice and start enjoying yourself at a level you've never enjoyed yourself before. A conscious being knows that you can make that choice so they don't interfere with you and they let you do it as long as you want to do it. So again, the more conscious you become, you realize why nobody's interfering with your life. Higher consciousness beings, and there's certainly more higher consciousness part of myself than me, the reason why they don't interfere with me is because they know I can change my mind whenever I want to, and I have all the assistance, visible and invisible, that I could possibly have to help me make that choice. I'm still choosing to keep doing what I've done in the past. They honor my right to, to do that, because remember, I want my freedom, so I'm gonna give you your freedom, even if that freedom includes your right to suffer as long as you think you need to suffer, knowing that I'm open to being supportive of your happy change whenever you are ready to do it. So you actually meddle less and less the more awake you become, the more you give everything and everybody over to God because you're trying to give your problems to God and your perceptions. So you do the same thing with everybody else's. I'm expecting God to help me with my issues, so why would I think I was responsible for solving yours? I would do the same thing with you that I would do with me, which is I would give you to the Holy Spirit, to God, but then you would then ask God, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And who would you have me say it to? That would be my part. My part would be to give you all to your higher power, and then ask if there's anything for me to do, God, let me know what that is. And how will I know what that is from listening to this section of sacrifice? I would know what it is because it's already told me God wouldn't ask me to make a sacrifice. So whatever that guidance is that I know love is going to give me, it would not be guidance that's me doing something that I really, really didn't want to do. And I saw it as a sacrifice ultimately. That's not saying I might not have some resistance and still go ahead and do it because sometimes I recognize resistance as... Do you know the difference between when you're having resistance and it's resistance based on you being tested if you will go beyond your edge and see if you will go to another level and resistance that's, that's just flat out, you know you don't need to do this. You know the difference from within yourself because you won't let the resistance stop you and you won't feel resistance and you won't feel resentment when you go beyond the resistance. So you will be able to, you will be able with the God in you, you will be able to tell when you're having resistance that's just your edge and you need to go beyond it and when you're having resistance that's saying you don't need to do this. And if you will study A Course in Miracles and apply the lessons, you will learn how to tell the difference. It won't happen through a lecture. It won't happen through you analyzing. It's going to happen through the application of the ideas. That's how it's going to happen. So I'm going to wrap it up right here. Let's acknowledge us for, for giving ourselves a Christmas present like this. I want to acknowledge everybody online. Uh, I feel really good. I feel really good. Those of you who joined me today, Shahira, Kim, Holden, Demola, Elizabeth, Nick, all the rest of you all online, I so love you. You are my Christmas presents. You are my gifts. So those of you who'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, just go to earlpurdy.com. And I will be doing an online workshop on the 13th of January. Those of you online as well as in the room, either put your name and email if you're interested on this pad up front, and if you're online, go to my website and drop me an email. Is that for me, 
and let me know that you're interested and I'll let you know. Uh, it's it's going to be hardcore and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. So also I'm available for, for sessions called Clarity Sessions. We're going into a new year. Those of you who would like to start your new year off letting go of the blocks, I'm here to support you in doing that. Those of you who are open to receiving guidance and information, that also comes through the language called astrology and numerology, which is just another language, just like the Course in Miracles is another language, then I'm available to help you do that. We have more help than we can avail ourselves of, but I would invite you to start thinking weird. I would invite you to start thinking weird. Start thinking out of the box. Stop being afraid to think differently from what the world thinks. Stop being, if you are, stop being afraid of being called weird because you don't go into agreement with what fear-based people believe. Because you will seem weird. I've seen more people be frightened by me being loving than I've ever seen people be frightened when I was also acting like another frightened person. Uh, fear-based people become immediately suspicious of people who are loving because it's hard for them to conceive of someone being beyond what they think they are. So they are calling for love. But that doesn't mean you need to get into a special relationship with them. I say that again. They're calling for love. Because your inner circle needs to be people that you feel you're both having an evolutionary relationship with. And you're both growing. And that you're both going beyond your limits and barriers. You don't need to spend all your time trying to convince somebody about a direction you've already decided is the one that's best for you. And and it has actually been satisfying. You know, it's not even like it with your direct your how many of you are pretty satisfied with your path, even though you know you still have your growth opportunities to go through. That, that's where I am. It's like I, I'm I'm totally cool with the path that I'm on. Because I see a progress beyond what anything that I could imagine. Now I feel innocent enough for more of my own misperceptions to come up to be healed. Now I can look at my ego better than I could ever look at it with more innocence than I ever looked at it before. So Christ is love. It's time for us to go home. Do you know what home is? Home is a permanent state of love. It's inside of you. You all are blessings in my life. This upcoming year just represents another opportunity to choose once again. Every day you get another opportunity. Every minute you get another opportunity to choose once again. To choose once again. This is John Christmas. Go to johnchristmas.com and you can download all of his music at no charge for free. It's based on the teachings of the Course, this part. So what is love doing? Do you see the world turning? The world is turning us on. The world is turning us on so much that we forget about our home. I see the world is turning. It's spinning, around, it's spinning around and burning out of control. And some of these thoughts we have, they try to steal our soul. That's right, John. But God is calling. He keeps on calling. Are you ready to go home to love? Mary, end of sacrifice. Very end of sacrifice. So my pledge to myself is, I'm going to listen to love calling me home. Is it anybody else in here that want to go home to love? Those of you online, let's, 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 let's join with each other and let's go home. Let's go home. Listen to this. The sign of Christmas is a star. The sign of Christmas is uh, being the love in this spirit. 
The Christ in you is the love in you. So you are the second coming of Christ. And the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. So when you are recognizing your innocence, you're going to see your the drama quotient in your life is going to go way, way, way down. You are innocent. Tell yourself, I am innocent. I am innocent. I say that I am innocent. I am innocent. I am innocent. I am innocent. Say it. I am innocent. You don't necessarily have to believe it right now. Just set that intention. Say, in this next year, I want every block to the awareness of my innocence to be removed from my mind. My intention is to let go of any block, any block to love inside of me. I'm ready to let go of every block to love inside of me. And remember, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. All of my Facebook, Brothers and sisters and mighty companions, thank you for tuning in and the large numbers that you are tuning in. Thank you for seeing value in what I have to offer. And thank you, those of you in this room that came out on Christmas Eve. I am really blown away that you even showed up on Christmas Eve. It's such a special day. It's such a special day. But you were willing to join with me today. I love you so much. So this, in this great, in this great, Christmas is the end of sacrifice. So tell yourself right now, I am willing to let go of sacrifice. 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 I am willing to let go. What about we? We are willing to let go of sacrifice. We are willing to let go of sacrifice. We are willing to let go of sacrifice. We are willing to let, and then tell yourself, I bless the world because I bless myself. 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 Let miracles replace all grievances. 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 I let miracles replace all grievances. 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 Appreciate y'all. Thanks for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, I appreciate you. Hugs are available. Go to my website and check it out. It's earlpurdy.com.